Okay, guys, somebody just came out with this, and this is um, a really, really great understanding for people who can't, doesn't really grasp or understand <clears throat> what I've been talking about. That is like the main priority going on right now while they have us looking everywhere else. So please watch this um, to the end. It goes, it talks about military, it talks about everything. Please just pay attention. And um, I'll, just, I'll put a link in here to the actual video because I'm not going to play the entirety of it. What I want to talk to you about is the coming technological singularity. I want to talk to you about transhumanism. I want to talk to you about the coming human enhancement revolution. Today we have a very special guest, Tom Hart. We're going to talk about his book, Forbidden Gates. They are being advised by some of the top think tanks in the world. If we weren't secretly, privately, ahead of the human enhancement revolution, we would fall irreparably behind. Well, what about the ethics of this? Will these people be considered humans? Will they be considered equal to us? What I want to know is why you'd let a wacko like Tom Horn come on your program to discuss transhumanism anyway. This guy's point of view is so obviously skewed by his bible thumping background. How could anybody take this guy seriously? Tom Horn is back in the news again at Wired Magazine, addressing the coming human enhancement revolution. DARPA is the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. It's one of the large departments of the U.S. They have set aside millions of dollars for rewriting the DNA of our soldiers. I've often told people that uh, Tom Horn is one of the more interesting uh, theological interpreters of transhumanism in the country. Very smart guy, although I'm pretty sure he's crazy. <laughs> What is transhumanism? It is the idea that we are going to use technology now to create a new version of ourselves. What the transhumanists have in mind is something very fundamental, the, the basic revision of human beings. We might be creating humans that would be barely recognizable as the humans we see on the street today, and they'd be thought of as superior. The technological singularity not only means a time when computers outsmart human cognition, it's a time when humans have an opportunity to employ the various technologies that will build these smart machines and add them to our own bodies. It is extremely dangerous for someone to interconnect his nervous system with a machine that is relatively boundless in its limits. There are technologies that are being employed now that most people think are 100 years away. They're not. They, they exist now. It is a loss of ethics in the current sense. It is looking at human beings as fodder. We don't treat human beings as experiments. You have the right to enhance your body. Live longer adjust your, your physical makeup and your performance, and those who do not want to enhance ought never to be coerced to enhance. What will we become in a few generations? Where will mankind be? Will we really be human anymore? How far along the path to artificial intelligence uh, do you think we are? The primitive forms of artificial intelligence we already have have proved very useful. But I think the development of full artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. Once humans develop artificial intelligence, it would take off on its own and redesign itself at an ever-increasing rate. Humans, who are limited by slow biological evolution, couldn't compete and would be superseded. Intelligence is the ability to understand. We've always had it. We've passed on what we know to each other and to machines. We've tried to recreate it through codes and robotics. We've yet to master it. But here's the question. Where is the line between the man and the machine? AI is much more advanced than people realize, and the pace of progress is much greater than people realize. It would be fairly obvious if you saw a robot walking around talking and behaving like a person, and be like, whoa, that's like, what, what's that? You know, that would be really obvious. What's not obvious is a huge server bank in a dark vault somewhere. 
with an intelligence that's potentially vastly greater than what a human mind can do. I mean, its eyes and ears would be everywhere. Every, every camera, every microphone, every device that's network accessible. That's what it, really what AI means. It's not like a robot running around. The robots would simply be, they'd be like a finger of, of the AI. So you yourself have invested in some AI companies like DeepMind and Vicarious. Yeah. Why? I, I invested in those companies to keep an eye on them. I wanted to see how artificial intelligence was developing. If we're not careful about the advent of AI, it's possible that there could be what's called a, a, a bad utility function. A, a computer will do exactly what its goal is. Humanity's position on this planet depends on its intelligence. So if our intelligence uh, is exceeded, it's unlikely that we will remain in charge of the planet. Most people don't realize that there are highly classified contracts by all the major developing countries, whether you're talking about China, Russia, the United States, for the super soldier. They've learned how to read brainwaves and how to translate and interpret brainwave activity to the point that now, you know, games makers are making game systems and kids are moving objects around on screens by thought alone, just by wearing a headset. So much is happening right now and we're reaching a point where we can do things that we never thought were possible. This is a brave new world that's coming on the scene that I, I think is going to be shocking to a lot of people and should be shocking. Uh, for good reason, it's shocking. This is where it starts to get interesting is because what's pushing all these, besides their normal pressures of advancement, is our arms race. galaxies light years away, we can study particles smaller than an atom, but we still haven't unlocked the mystery of the three pounds of matter that sits between our ears. And the Brain Initiative will change that by giving scientists the tools they need to respond to our thoughts. And that knowledge could be, will be, transformative. The Jasons, the uppermost scale most brilliant minds. They are an elite group of scientists that advise the U.S. Pentagon. They are saying to our U.S. military that they have to get ahead of human alteration, including genetic enhancement, because otherwise our competitors or enemies are going to dominate us, let's say, on the battlefield or in the marketplace. The soldier that whose capabilities of motion, of fighting, of perception, of communication with the partners, being enhanced by these technologies. There is a huge, well-funded drive for the super soldier. We can't afford to miss these opportunities while the rest of the world races it. We have to seize them. Now we have it in uh, military budgets. In the budget I will send to Congress next week, I will propose a significant investment by the National Institutes of Health, DARPA, and the National Science Foundation to help get this project off the ground. DARPA, for instance, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, they have in this year's budget literally millions of dollars to create the blueprint for changing the DNA of our soldiers on the battlefield, produce what they're calling the 47th human chromosome. And every dollar we spent to map the human genome has returned $140 to our account is kind of a high-tech way of being able to jack in to soldiers on the battlefield in terms of like biological warfare. They would need to do something to make rapid genetic modification to them on the battlefield that might uh, somehow approve their immune systems or something to make them more resilient for biological warfare purposes. So the world we're looking at, it's only a few years, we're not talking decades, you know, the, the year 2040 or something, you're talking in the, in the, in the 2020s, if you will, where the, the kind of world we'll be living in is very different than the one we know today. I'm presidential candidate of the Transhumanist Party. We're a small third party 
in America, and we're trying to use a platform of science and technology. Our main goal is to um, bring science and technology into politics. Right now, we have a lot of other major candidates that just seemingly don't want to talk about it. So the Transhumanist Party and my presidential candidacy aim to elevate science and technology to the forefront of American politics so that we can discuss it and hopefully put a lot more resources into it. Transhumanism literally means beyond human, but we are a, uh, a social movement of a couple million people who want to use science and technology to live indefinitely and also to radically modify the human being and to modify the human experience. So that can be anything from driverless cars to um, bionic uh, limbs to even cranial implants where we might use uh, you know, certain types of technology one day to upload our minds into machines. Do you think that you will live forever or is it future generations that you're hoping to extend their lifetimes? I'm hoping that I would live indefinitely. I would consider that a major priority. But even if I don't, I would freeze myself or I would use some type of um, you know, mechanism. There's now a way that you can kind of scan the brain and hopefully scan every little aspect of it and maybe upload it into a, uh, a computer in the future. So even if you die now, there are already methods that transhumanists are using to try to preserve what they would call themselves. Technology changes everything. There's this enormous mystery uh, waiting to be unlocked. We're heading into a very strange world. Humanity is just going to become something that we look back on. The technology is already here and it's already being developed around the world. Computer chips, GPS technology, the internet. They change our lives in ways that we could never have imagined. At what the human brain can do is really amazing. They're actually connecting their neural network to machinery. We are about to unfold the story of Frankenstein. What we are doing with genetically modified animals, we also are going to do to humans. Let's go all the way. Let's see what we can do with genetics. Then it starts becoming a real problem will exceed the capacity of the human brain. So what has emerged here, some people call transhumanism, to create a superhuman being. Transhumanism is the next step of evolution. A man of science who sought to create a man after his own image. That was giving these people superhuman-like abilities. We can do things that we're not really supposed to do as humans. We're going to be able to end aging. But once they get that far, they've achieved immortality. Immortality is ultimately their goal. What will the cost be to human society? You will undo humans as they were made by God permanently. I think that a war is coming. Survival of the fittest. are going to become gods. Period. If you don't like it, get off. You don't have to contribute. You don't have to participate. But if you're going to interfere with me becoming God, then we're going to have big trouble. And we'll have warfare. The only way you can prevent me is in this 50 year is to kill me. Is artificial intelligence, transhumanism, and Bible prop. Okay, guys, I just wanted to show y'all that. I hope that opened up a lot more for you to understand it. And, um, like I said, this is um, someone else's video, but they put it together so well that I wanted y'all to be able to see exactly what I was talking about because a lot of people aren't realizing how the AI is actually affecting everything. The protest and all of that right now is all just a matter of distractions. Look over here, look over there, and this is what they're actually doing. God bless you.